ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Kreskin. Thank you. Thank you, my friends. Uh, thank you. Oh, my gosh. What a welcome. Well, oh, thank you. All of you listening, and you know, I, I have a feeling part of the enthusiasm and the electricity going through the room at this moment is the fact that this is really the beginning of the fifth year of our series. Five years we're going into. The thing is, we're going to depart from my regular program. We've, we've made a sudden departure and decision in light of some things that have taken place in the past few days. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're watching tonight's program on tape, maybe a week from now, a month from now, two years or five years from now, anyone in your home, I don't care if it's a teenager, person in college, an older person, who's interested, let's say, in politics, who's interested in history, and fascinated with the power of the mind, I think you owe it to yourself to sit down and listen. You will not easily forget what's going to take place tonight after the following message. I'm going to turn tonight's program briefly into a press conference because I think the content, at least what is behind the stories we're going to discuss, are of interest to people all over the world, especially those of us in the free world. We like to think of ourselves as free-thinking people. So I'm going to have two very responsible and professional journalists joining me. First gentleman is one of the, actually one of the anchormen in CTV National News. Would you welcome with me Mr. Lloyd Robertson? Boy. How are you, Lloyd? Well, <laughs> sit down, Lloyd. Huh? Um, well, well deserved. And my, my other guest is a CTV correspondent who writes and produces his own program called Backgrounder, dealing with actually topics of an international nature. Would you welcome Mr. Tom Gould? Tom Gould? How are you, Tom? Good to see you. Sit down. Well, one of us go back a little bit of ways, I think, to the days of Ottawa. Yes, that's and right. We st where the series started about four and a half years ago. You know, uh, may I call Tom, Tom and Lloyd? Uh, right, sure. Uh, I think what really sparked this, and uh, the first story really is uh, a month old. Even if you're seeing this five years from now, I have a feeling it's going to be written about in books, textbooks, and controversial books for a long time. I was traveling through Canada, through some of the small cities, which is really the way to learn to get to know people, I think. That's true in the States as well. And suddenly I get calls from the networks in the States, CBS, NBC. What about uh, Robert Toth, who was, of course, the gentleman, as uh, all the newspapers from the Los Angeles, New York Times, Toronto, what have you, uh, was incarcerated for a time being, I suppose, by the KGB because ostensibly they said that he had uh, stolen a paper, a top secret paper on parapsychology. You know, gentlemen, there are political ramifications obviously to this. That may have been just an excuse to uh, put him in an uncomfortable position because of uh, Cold War changes. I don't know. I'm sure you have your own opinions that are more important than mine. But I think the one thing that interests us is the fact that uh, the paper that they used as an excuse was a paper on parapsychology. Do you have any feelings on that, gentlemen, either of you? Well, it wasn't an excuse. I mean, the man was talking, uh, Toth was talking. He was about to leave the Soviet Union. Uh, he had known this uh, scientist in the past. The man slipped him some documents. Uh, 
The Russians obviously didn't like him taking documents. You know what's fascinating about that is uh, the man who wrote the paper, it's very, very significant. First of all, parapsychology is a topic of interest in Russia and it goes in cycles. In Stalin's era, it was outlawed in all of the Soviet Union. You could not write about ESP, uh, nor, nor could you write about a psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis with, was put with relics that they considered superstition because they were afraid that the public might come to be too interested in anything that didn't have a materialistic basis on the surface, that we didn't understand well enough to decide that it was, uh, had a materialistic cause. So you were not even allowed to talk about extrasensory perception. So when he banned it, he had a group of scientists quietly researching it all those years of the mid-40s through to the 50s. But one thing very peculiar, he's a mentalist in Russia. He's in his 80s now. He's bought fighter planes for the Russian people. His name is Rolf Messing. And the scientists in this country could never understand why a man who did all these stunts with the mind was allowed to tour Russia. Well, I think the Russians uh, would be fascinated, naturally, in mind control. And I know that Tom is, is a very independent-minded man, so he I may suspect, not agree with me. I can tell I, by yeah, the way he just He may there. not agree with me when, when, I, when I say this, but I think that it is certainly possible to brainwash. There have been examples of it. It is certainly possible to control individuals or groups of individuals based upon a person's own insecurities. And I think it's possible for... Uh, the masses of secret police in the Soviet Union. And there are masses. And there are Five percent right? of the Soviet Union, sure. actually. Sure. Uh, we're to, about to, yeah. sure though, like. No, but I, I, I just, what I'm saying is why they would be, why they would be interested in just and the fascinated the by the subject. But brainwashing, uh, as developed by the CIA with some uh, Canadian connivance, I gather, over a 25 million Including McGill period. University. 25, 25 million dollars as and the next story. These people were studying brainwashing, only it was sensory deprivation. They were trying that to the take away, away your, your senses. Yeah, what do you call ASP? I'm really interested in knowing well, how you Well, of course, it means many things to many people, but let's, the scientific answer or the scientific definition of ESP would be an area of human behavior where man seems to be able to pick up information or ideas in a manner that's not understood right now. That could be a part of what ESP is. I don't know. Well, I think the phenomenon is there. Duke University, were, uh, I believe, that were, were the pioneers in this. Duke Dr. J.B. Uh, Ryman, he did That's it more statistically, yes. And he had machines flipping over cards in Los Angeles and people trying to figure out what the card turned over. I, I read those things when I was younger because it's been going on a long time. I was never very impressed with the results. I don't mm -hmm. know whether you were. I was. I was impressed. You know, if one person showed significant results, I would be impressed. And the thing is, whether we believe in it or not, as, as much as we might say something is uh, statistically unproven or coincidence, there will always be thousands of people looking in, including uh, famous individuals like Arthur Godfrey or Mark Twain or what have you, who've had such dramatic incidents that to see their father dying while they're out at sea, they could not call that coincidence if it happened the same time he died. Do you understand what I'm saying? That can't be. But how much of the, I think people get awfully confused in all of this area because you're into into what is commonly called déjà vu, which is a feeling you've been somewhere before. You've been somewhere we before have gone here. so far afield. I have a déjà vu experience <laughs> that almost as if the signal is to go to a commercial <laughs> that I saw two minutes ago. It's fascinating. We'll be back in just a moment, folks. <laughs>
Well, I've met our next guest before. Actually, for about 20 seconds in the dressing room, and he's a delightful gentleman. Uh, he's actually the star of the King of Kensington, a very witty and very humorous man. Will you join with me meeting Al Waxman? Al, where are you? You're known here. Here you are. Keep it, keep out of here, Al. Our newsman. Oh, Al, well, you gotta, you gotta join us. I hope you found what we discussed. Yeah, I was, I was watching and listening in the green room. I was, I was thinking, is there any such thing, perhaps, as uh, inverse brainwashing? And in, in that, you see, I, I made a picture once in an Iron Curtain country. Did you? And uh, we were told when what we came over there, that? Czechoslovakia, mm -hmm. just after Dubček had been mm. the, the fall of Dubček, and so that was about what about seventy. Yeah. And we were told never to talk about anything political with the actors. So suddenly you became very paranoid about what you were talking about and what you, what, you, what you were avoiding and what you could talk about. And every night when I went to bed, I'd step up on the bed, lean over the chandelier, and say, good night. And because uh, I, I suddenly became conscious that, you know, like people are watching and what should I say? Well, I've What shouldn't understood. I say? So that's like an inverse yes. kind of brainwash. You almost feel intimidated by the fact that you're aware of the social constrictions. And I think it's the case. I've never told this publicly, but someone I know very, very well. We, we, we should kiss the earth in which we are occupying now just to be able to watch a program like this. Someone I know very well almost had a nervous breakdown because he studied to be an intelligence agent. He was going to be dropped by a parachute. I've never, I, I, my, I don't know, three friends of mine know about this, dropped by parachute into a communist country. He had to learn to become drunk in the language. He had to learn to pose and pray and curse and become upset and angry and drink because no one was to ever suspect that he was not a member of that country. His father was very proud of him, and the day he graduated, his father was so proud that even though his son was another part of the United States, his father put his picture in the local town paper in Pennsylvania, and the gentleman who spent all these years, his career as a, an intelligence agent was canceled because no one doubted. <laughs> Within 24 hours, his picture was all over Russia in the pockets of every agent. Can you imagine that? Come on over, Alan, join our men here. It's good to have you here. <laughs> Sit down, man. That's on. You know, you've met him before. This is Al. Sit down here, gentlemen, right here. Stop. You know, you know what I was very, very much concerned about? And you, you mentioned something about the brainwashing. Of course, we have now the fact 21, $25 million spent over 25 years by the CIA in finding one thing most of all, how to control other individuals. Now, that's what most of the Russian ESP research is dealing with. In the United States and Canada, all the scientists are trying to figure out, find subjects who can sense the thoughts of others, some kind of telepathy, whatever we want to call it, whether we believe it or not, they've always looked for that kind of sensitive. Most of the Russian research has been putting a man in a box, lowering him three or four stories beneath the earth, and seeing if they could find Russian people who could concentrate hard enough to knock out the man. <laughs> also finding out if when a man is in outer space, if all kinds of electrical machinery breaks down, if there's a way of communicating with him without the use of, you know, the physical means. Well, that's and where that, Star Wars uh, interested me. Oh, I tell you. The, the final analysis, the man took over. We've got a man, and then this, this <laughs> great interest in mind over matter. They've had, you know, they had people who claimed to move matchsticks. They were all found to be fraud by just holding their hands over them. But it sparked, I guess, the interest of the communist people, which seems to be controlled. And look at this. All this time, with our awareness that the communist interest is in control, we find the CIA is using a lot of techniques to see if the mind can be controlled. They were interested in the offensive use of brainwashing. Well. I wonder if it was from a defensive viewpoint. I, I don't know. We have a man here. I've got to have him bring in these knives and forks and so forth. Ziv is his name. Yes. He's, a, he's a food and beverage manager at a very prominent hotel. Would you welcome him as he brings in? Ziv, how are you? Okay, right over here. I'm sorry. Okay. Can we set all these down here? Ziv, how long have you been in, in your work? Um, I'm working in the Constellation Hotel for about three and a half years. That's uh, called a dramatic plug, Ziv, and it came in so <laughs> subtly. Listen, I'm thank sorry, you. I That's all right. Know. Thank you. Thank you, and nice to have uh, you here. Let's thank you. Whoops. <laughs> you know, 
in the early days, talk about the area that I don't particularly believe in, in the early days of so-called uh, research. We had the mediums, and of course Houdini was exposing them all over the place because they were really fleecing a lot of people. They were making objects move and change shape. But I asked for knives and forks because I don't know why the Russians are so concerned in mind over matter, except that the paper that was stolen, quote, stolen, it was an apparent proof on the part of that scientist that ESP was all physical. And that was what the Russians were looking for. Now, I don't know if it's proved or not. But let me show you something. Take a, take a fork in your, ha in your fist. <clears throat> no, I will try this. Take it I in your... I thought he was going to levitate. Oh, you're talking about levitation. That's a whole other story. <laughs> Hold your hand out and take this in your, in your fist. Just open your hand. Close it in your fist. Take another... Ziv certainly cleaned out his, uh, there may be people eating at his uh, place of business right now who have nothing to eat. <laughs> Hold it in your fist. Now here's what I want you gentlemen to do. We don't have that an awful lot of time. Right. Hold it rather tightly. That should be pushed in a little bit more. That's all right, like that. And you should have that further. Now, try not to move, but whether, you know, whether we believe anything's going to happen or not, I want you gentlemen to tell me if you notice anything taking place. Any, there isn't that much time. As soon as you feel a change of temperature, and any of the items you're holding, just stop me. Stop in the middle of the conversation, whether it's getting warmer or tingling or what have you, but just interrupt me. Because it will only take a matter of seconds. Well, the, the one on my left hand's a little cooler. Now, does that mean that this has gotten warmer or what? You tell me. I'm, I'm not aware of this one at all. I'm you're not aware, aware of this. Now, tell me what you mean. You, you don't feel any sensation? Oh, now I do. That's very interesting. Now what I kind? Do. But very at, interesting. At that moment, before what you kind ask of, me that question... This was getting cooler. This, this was a little cooler. Well, I'm looking for warmth. This was just neither warm nor cold. What's happening now? I have to work with the first person who spoke. That's why I'm, what do you feel happening now? You said now the that... The same. The same. In, in my left hand, it's a little cooler. And this is warmer. Neither. One, neither cold nor warm. It's just... There. All right, now hold it tighter. Let's try something. Tell me what you feel happening. Now, I'm only doing this lightly. It should be a conductor of heat to some degree, but you tell me what you feel happening. But you, you know what's interesting is that, like, nothing's happening there, but this one's colder. As, well, oh, see, the cold is not going to work. Look. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Would you hold the point at which it broke? Push your thumb over quick. What does it feel like? Very hot. It's very, very hot. Isn't that yeah. fascinating, folks? <laughs> Look. You know, we don't have too much time. Gentlemen, want to show it to them? I, I, I wish I could have gotten to each of them. There's just no time. We'll be back after the following commercial, folks. Jeez. <laughs> And you no, I was, I was thinking, uh, 
that if, if I got you to come over to my house and broke some more of my cutlery, it might be a good way for me to dye it. <laughs> you felt the heat in there, didn't you, Al? Yeah. It was really... Al, I'm going to show a rather unusual effect that I, I've really never done quite in this way before. You, by the way, Al, let's, let's stress something. No one told you what I was going to do as far as this part of the program. Absolutely. My concern, you, there's been no discussion, no explanation. Right. What we're going to do, and you'll help me, Al, there's two sets of children's blocks. Pick up one of them to reveal the fact that actually they are numbered, but the number is only on one side of the block. Do you want to show that factor? In other words, there's not a number all on every side. And how about, Al, if you'll do me a favor, just stacking the blocks, one on top of the other, if you will. Just stack your blocks, one on top of the other. Put the one down, and then on top of it a two. Right. I won't count all the way because then it becomes an educational type program. And well, we'll, can you can handle that. Now make them kind of even. I'm making my six blocks, Al, as even as I can, so that I can take a little chimney, actually from an old children's game, and place it over here. In fact, I've got a peak hole so that I can actually, I don't know why, because I'm not gonna be able to see the numbers on that side. But I've stacked them. And they are here, one on top of the other, one all the way up to six. All right, now, Al, we'll leave yours exactly as they are now. Here's what we're going to do. Not bad at all. I'm going to take children's number cards. They're not playing cards, but you can see, Al, that they're actually various numbers from zero to nine. The six could become a problem whether you hold it this way or not, so always look in the, uh, in the upper corner to know that it's a six. All you're going to utilize, Al, are the numbers one to six, because the blocks my set of blocks and your set of blocks only cover those numbers. So, Al, here's what we'll do. You're going to go through the deck. The deck is going to be shuffled more in a moment. And as you turn over cards, when you get the numbers one to six, you'll leave them in the order they come up. That's a five. Now, well, we got another five. You'll never count a second five. Do you understand it? The first five is the, is the only digit you'll, three fives. Now we got a seven. We can't use that. We've got a one. So, so far, Al, with two ones, you've got five, one and four. You see what I mean? Right. Is that, is that clear to you? We're going to do, in other words, by chance, you're going to figure out an order of numbers from one to six, however they come up in this deck. Right. All right. Now, Al, do me a favor. Stan, <laughs> you sure, <laughs> certainly can do this. Stand behind me, if you will, just right. over here. Let me shuffle these a moment more. As a matter of fact, Al, let me hold the deck behind me. Yeah. Take about a third of the deck off. Just about a third off the top. And the camera cannot see your car. Just take a, uh, you can take, mix them face down. In other words, I don't even want you to know, Al, the order that the cards are in. You can come a little bit closer, but shuffle them. And when you finish shuffling them, place them back on my hand face down. Have you done? Right Just face right down. Right. Now, Al, here's a chart here. Would you take that, please? Right. Got it? And here's a felt tip marking pencil. Right. What you'll do now, Al, is one at a time, you'll turn over a card from the deck and place it out, if you will, face up on this hand. If it's a number from one to six, write the number on the chart, but keep it hidden from all of us. Okay. Do you understand? I turn over the top card, put it face up on this hand. Okay. Is it a number from one, don't tell us the number, but is it from one to six? No. It is not from one, turn over another card. Okay. Is it from, put it on the hand. Is that from one to six? It is. Write it down, but don't show it to anyone, Al. Okay. You can write it to the left so that you can write them side by side. Now, Al, take another card. If you get a duplicate, of course, you would put it on face up on the other hand. Is it from one to six? Yeah. Put it down. And you keep doing this, Al. What he's doing, yeah. folks, is, and I think it's pretty obvious, if I had him yeah. put it face, is it a number from one to yeah. six? It's not a duplicate. No. All right. <laughs> this way, he's not likely to think in sequence. All put right. it face up. No, this is a duplicate. Let's well, take another card, then. All right. And you're doing this, put it face up. Okay. See, most of the times, folks, people would tend go in terms of a sequence. Even if they picked a four, they tend to have a five or a six in their mind. Not another number from one to six, huh? This one is. All right. Good. And it's not a duplicate. No. Now, Al, let me, as you go further. Yeah. Is it from duplicate again? Yeah. How is that? That's... Have you used that number? Yes. How many numbers do you have now? Six. You don't need any more. Right. Turn these face down. These cards. Back on the deck. And put them on the table. I'll put them down on the table, Al, thusly. Because I'm keeping the deck. Well, I, I don't even need to have the deck behind me. Now, Al, yeah. hiding the card, would you stand to my left? Would you memorize the stand over here? To my right. I'm sorry, over to here. For a mentalist, I'm thinking of reversals. Do you have the order memorized? Would you look at the chart? Memorize the order. Don't tell it to me, but memorize it. You can always look back at the card. Now, Al, look. 
You can always check the card. Concentrate on the first digit, but don't tell me what it is. Okay. Keep the card so that even our audience cannot see it. Would you place your left hand on my shoulder, Al? Now, will me, if you will, don't say anything. Put your hand on my shoulder. Will me to pick up your card. Do not tell me what it is. Al, may I ask you, is this the first number yeah. or two? Yes. Yeah. Put your hand on my shoulder. Right. Is that it? Boy, do I feel powerful. Is that it, Al? Yeah. It really is. And nothing has been prearranged. These were done by chance. All right. Bear in mind, all I have here, folks, are one, two, three, four, five, six in order. And I've stacked them very carefully. Concentrate on the next digit. Okay. Fantastic. Don't even tell me any further. All right. Time is going. I got to tell you something. I should not have picked them up together. It's the wrong order. It's that. And I get a one which gives me two, five, four, six, three, six, one, three is what I get. What's the number? Turn them around. Hold it. Two, five, four, six, one, three. Stand here, Al. But the idea of mind over matter is something we can't even conceive of. And this really isn't that, but they were placed in order. Al, look. Look over here, if you will. There we have two, five, four, six, one, three. And they are solid. Look. Solid blocks. We did it, folks, huh? Come over here, Al. Thank you for being here. You know, folks, in Russia, there have been people who've claimed the power of mind over matter. There have been people in the Western world. Uh, they've been proved to be frauds in most cases. In Russia, that's definitely been the case. But they treat their psychics in Russia differently. Their frauds are put in jail. In this country, in the States and Canada, if a person's found to be a fraud, the next step is they'll move to Hollywood and become an advisor to the stars. But the thing that worries me most of all is the third step that's rampant in the Western world. They become healers, and that could be a tragedy. Think about what we said tonight, and I'll see all of you next week. Be the good Lord willing. Goodbye. Guests of the amazing Greskin stay at the beautiful Ramadas in Toronto, two of 700 Ramada inns around the world.